This will never happen to you. Never happen to any of your friends or loved ones. The sad truth is that now no one in our city, no one in our state, no one in our country has that luxury anymore. That was Mayor Craig Greenberg one year ago today after a gunman walked into the old National Bank in downtown Louisville and killed five of his co-workers. That tragedy changed our city forever. Today, Louisville and our neighboring communities will honor those victims and survivors of that attack. Let us never forget Dina Eckert, Tommy Elliott, Jim Tutt, Joshua Barrick, and Juliana Farmer. They were all the employees at that bank and were killed the morning of April 10th of last year. For their families, it's been a year of grieving, processing, and healing. Last month, we had the chance to talk with Josh's wife, Jessica Barrick. She said in the days and months following her husband's death, getting through that day to day of this new world was a battle. It was just trying to survive those first few days with the kids. And some days it's still like that. We were just kind of getting to this like sweet spot where the kids were more self-sufficient and doing their own thing and like he and I had our time again. And it's so unfair to think about all that we were robbed of. Jessica said she and the kids talk often about their dad and remember him for all that he was and still is for that sweet family. Kids still, they'll draw him pictures and they leave them on the table back there and we go visit him, um, but we tell, we tell stories about him all the time. Remember when dad did this and he made me laugh here. The laughter was a big part of our life. So I'm, we're trying to get that back. And she said they are moving forward, but they'll never move on. Today will be another step in that journey. At 2.30 this afternoon, Mayor Craig Greenberg will be joined by Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, the CEO of Old National Bank and multiple others to honor those victims. Right now, new memorials are outside of Preston Point, a beautiful bouquet of flowers for each of the five lost. The bank has since moved locations, but WHAS 11 will be streaming that service live on our website and on air. LMPD officer Nick Wilt, as you may remember, was shot in the head while responding to that shooting. His family said back in February he was showing signs of semi-independence and is also able to walk with the use of a cane, though still facing challenges, particularly with the use of his left arm. Well, today the gun shop that sold the gunman the weapon used that day now faces a second lawsuit. It was filed by the families of Tommy Elliott, Juliana Farmer, and Dina Eckert and includes a gun accessory supplier and manufacturer. The suit claims River City Firearms ignored red flags when the gunman bought the AR-15 used in that shooting, also accusing the manufacturers of failing to ensure the product it makes are not sold to people who pose a risk to themselves and others. This is similar to that lawsuit filed back in January by four survivors in that shooting and with the families of Joshua Tutt and Josh, James Tutt and Joshua Barrick. So far, River City Firearms has not responded to our request for comment. In remembrance of those lost, all old national bank locations in Louisville will be closed today. All other locations will close at 2 so team members can participate in a walk to remember. Old National Bank and the American Red Cross also partnering together this afternoon in hosting a blood drive. We know blood donations were critical in saving lives last April. There are five participating blood donation centers throughout the city. Their hours vary from now until 6 tonight, depending on the location. If you'd like to donate, you can Click on the link in this story on our website, whas11.com. If I go back, you know, 30 years and you told me that Fire and EMS would be wearing ballistic equipment, uh, you know, I'd have told you you were, you know, way out in la-la land. It has, however, become a reality for so many of our first responders, equipment that can be crucial to re your rescue and saving lives in an emergency. Tonight at 6, a year after the old National Bank shooting, the head of Metro Emergency Services explains how the EMS response to mass shootings has changed over the years and why. Indiana State Police are investigating an officer-involved shooting that led to the death of a woman in North Vernon. It happened around 7 last night at a home on Thomas Street. Police said 23-year-old Rachel Blake was armed with a knife inside of a home, and after numerous attempts to get her to drop the weapon, police said Blake refused and then moved forward toward them. That's when two officers fired at Blake. She died at the scene. All the officers involved have been placed on administrative leave.
Former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll is back behind bars after a judge found him in contempt of court. And we've just learned his trial was pushed from a May date to November. Knoll remains in the Scott County Jail for tax fraud and corrupt business influence. He'll spend 60 days there after two pistols were found inside his home. And that was in violation of his bond agreement set by Judge Larry Metlock back in November. During a tense three-hour long hearing yesterday, Knoll's attorneys say he believed all of his guns had been turned over except the one shotgun he was allowed to have. Judge Medlock said it was Noel's responsibility to ensure all those guns were given up, getting so upset he broke his gavel block. I told Mr. Noel, don't do anything stupid. Do not try to deceive me, defy me. You will not, not like the consequences. Today is that day. You don't interpret the law. You don't enforce the law. You're not above the law. Prosecutor Rick Hurdle said he thinks when Noel is released, he'll have the same bond conditions. Noel's trial set for November 6th. Tonight we will find out how JCPS plans to bus students in the fall. The school board called a special meeting this evening to vote on its transportation plan. The board tabled that same vote two weeks ago, saying it needed more time to review a recently released audit on the transportation system and now weighing for options. The first would provide bus transportation only to students attending their reside schools, cutting out the majority of magnet and traditional school kids. Option two would create a hub for bus pickup and drop offs. Three would keep things as they are and option four would provide bus service only to schools meeting a threshold of economically disadvantaged kids. The board has not revealed which plans it's voting to approve tonight. That meeting is set for six o'clock and we'll be there. A match made in hog heaven, as they say. Arkansas just announced John Calipari is the new head coach of the Razorbacks. Posting this video to Twitter this morning, Cal's leaving Kentucky after 15 seasons. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program. Calipari won more than 400 games at UK, including a national title, but many fans grew frustrated with early NCAA tournament exits the last few years, including this year when 14th seeded Oakland took out the Cats in the first round. Now many are split about Calipari's exit. He's always brought in the new people that just wanted to hang out for a year and go straight to pro and all that good stuff. I was really shocked. We got a new coach for U of L. We're going to have a new K, uh, UK coach too. That is my worry. You know, we literally <clears throat> could become irrelevant. Still no idea on who will replace him. Meanwhile, in Arkansas, Calipari replaces Eric Musselman as head coach of the Razorbacks. The university said he signed a five-year contract with a salary beginning at $7 million a season, and that runs through April 30th of 2029. The deal also includes a million-dollar signing bonus and retention bonuses of $500,000 each year of the contract. Calipari steps into that role tonight at the Bud Walton Arena.